Psychology and selling go hand in hand. They don't call it retail therapy for nothing. From which brand we choose to how much we will pay, selling is all about mind games. And the human mind is remarkably susceptible to hype. If you can tell a convincing story about a product, you can sell that product. And I'm about to prove it. There's a part of the brain which influences how enjoyable you find a product based on how much pleasure you believe you're going to get from it. I've taken my portable brain scanning equipment to the shop floor and I've found two unsuspecting shoppers, Darren and Roxanne, to wire up to the EEG. I want to be able to tell what's going on in your brain whilst you're drinking these wines. And so I'm going to need to apply these electrodes. These electrodes give me a handle on how much pleasure their brain is expecting to receive. Darren and Roxanne are going to try two wines, one of them posh and the other a cheap plonk. But what they haven't been told is that bottle X and bottle Y have both been refilled with exactly the same wine. I want to see how the story I tell them fools their senses and alters their brain's responses. I'll start with bottle Y. By the way, you should know that what I say about these wines is totally made up. This first wine retails at £40. It's from one of the best vineyards in the whole of the Bordeaux region. It's been producing amazing wines for hundreds and hundreds of years. This particular wine uh, has graced the tables of kings, heads of states and even emperors back in the day. They've used exactly the same method of making their wine for more than 20 generations. The grapes are picked by hand, the grapes are crushed underfoot, and then it's both fermented and matured in great oak casks, which gives it a very distinctive taste. We're very lucky to have got hold of this because they've only made 5,000 of this particular Grand Cru. Getting them to hold the glass whilst I talk is a classic psychological ploy to create the strongest possible connection to my story. I then ask them to smell the so-called posh wine and then take a sip. Their brain data has now been recorded. So now I'm going to move on to the cheap plonk in bottle X. If you'd like to take that in your hand, close your eyes. This is, by all uh, admission, pretty bog-standard, mediocre table wine. It's the kind of stuff that the French like to export to us rather than consuming themselves. With this vineyard, everything's completely automated. The grape picking, the crushing, and this massively automated process means that they can create enormous quantity of this stuff. This wine retails for four pounds, so it'll be interesting to see what you think of it. Okay, please take a taste. So, you've tried both wines now. I did. Tell me a little bit about how they compared. Well, they compared totally different. This one here is very rich. The minute I tasted that, it's almost like your taste buds just come alive. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Very vintage, very, as you said earlier on, the kings. But the other one, my mouth wasn't exploding with the goodness of, obviously, this one here. Mm -hmm. I think the only way I can describe that one is that was quite flat and quite bland. It tasted like it had been watered down quite a bit. Remember, it's the same wine in both bottles. Can you describe the, the bouquet? Horse wine. It was like, how could I say it? Blackberries are just golden off a tree. Whereas that one, I don't really smell anything. Do you think £40 is a fair price for this one? Yeah, yeah? for sure, definitely. And do you think £4 is a fair price for this one? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I think the prices are very well reflected in terms of the taste, I find. The data recorded from the EEG shows how their brain's expectations of pleasure varied throughout the tasting. Your data are truly beautiful. This is the size of your response to the first wine, mm -hmm. the beautiful posh wine. And then over here, this is your response to the second one, the plonk. <laughs> so there's clearly a difference in the way your brain responded to the two different wines. Would it surprise you to hear that actually the wines are exactly the same? What do you mean? We took a middling wine that costs about £10. We emptied the contents of these and we refilled it with the £10 wine. No! But it tasted different. That is totally weird. But the, it, it did smell and taste a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. totally. That is amazing, because in my mind, they're two different tastes, completely. I'm not trying to make a fool out of you. Oh, of course. This is purely to make the case that when you hear wonderful things about a wine, when it's presented properly, 
it actually changes the way you experience it, and that's witnessed in your brain responses. Any time we enjoy any product, we're always completely manipulated by our expectation.